So recently, I've been thinking about the PlayStation 3. You see, I've had this slim model since 2010, and in recent years, it's been sitting in my closet not doing anything. Now, of course, the PlayStation 3 is a very interesting system that we've covered on the channel before, but we haven't really looked at a recent jailbreak of the system, and I thought it would be a good idea to show you a jailbroken PlayStation 3 and talk about all the really cool things you can do with one. For me, the number one reason why I kept my PS3, and probably the same reason why many of you have, is to enjoy your old library of PS3, PS2, and PS1 originals on the hardware where Sony simply hasn't provided any means to play these games anymore. PlayStation 3 titles are locked to the hardware, and despite many false rumors about PlayStation 3 backward compatibility coming to PlayStation hardware, the best thing that you can probably do at this point is to either use emulation such as RPCS3 or own original hardware. Of course, RPCS3 is a fine solution, but you need some pretty beefy hardware for a good experience. The cost of a PlayStation 3 Slim is pretty cheap, and most PlayStation 3 Slims can be jailbroken. And I might add, it's probably the best model that you want to get, simply because you won't have any issues with the yellow light of death. So now I'm going to go ahead and jailbreak this PlayStation 3. Now before we start, it's important to know what model PS3 that we have here. And for the Slims, the model number is on the bottom of the case. We need to do this because not all PS3s can be jailbroken. However, in the instance where the model that you have cannot be jailbroken, you can install a HEN or a Homebrew enabler. And this is just an exploit that allows you to run Homebrew without making modifications to your firmware. A jailbreak installs a custom firmware which allows modifications at the operating system level and every time you restart the machine you'll be in a jailbroken PlayStation 3. A Homebrew enabler on the other hand requires the exploit to be run every time the system is powered on. Now, if we take a look at this list of all the available PlayStation 3 models, including the original fat models, the slim models, and even the super slim models, based on the model number that you have, the PlayStation 3 identifier, you can quickly look up and determine whether your PlayStation 3 can accept custom firmware. In other words, can it be jailbroken or does it require a homebrew enabler? And as you can see with my particular model here, we are able to perform a custom firmware exploit on it. Now, I'm not going to do a comprehensive jailbreak guide because every time I make a guide, they almost immediately seem to go out of date. So if you do want a step-by-step -step guide on how to jailbreak your PlayStation 3, then I recommend Mr. Mario 2011's video from last year that walks you through the entire process. It's still up to date as far as I know, but of course things can change. Now for this video, I'm going to give you a quick summary on how to do it, so you can at least have an idea of what's going on. Now the good news is that all this is done via software. There is no soldering or opening up of the system or performing any type of hardware modification or downgrading, none of that stuff. Now the first step of the process is to format a USB stick as FAT32, and I personally would recommend eight gigabytes you're going to want a copy of your flash that you'll dump from your PlayStation 3, and this will be used for recovery purposes if something goes wrong. You'll also want to install a custom firmware, which you're going to flash from your USB stick onto your PS3. And for this, I recommend the 4.90 Evil Nat Cobra Custom Firmware. And the reason why I chose this one is not only is it the latest 4.90 firmware for the PlayStation 3, so all your games will play without any type of firmware update requirement, but it also comes with full PlayStation 2 games compatibility. Now, when we're talking about playing PS2 games, of course, if you don't have an original fat model PS2 that has the PS2 back compat built in via hardware, then you'll be using a software emulator. The Evil Nat Cobra custom firmware will allow you to launch any PS2 title that you run on your jailbroken PS3. Of course, the emulation itself isn't perfect, but I do feel like PlayStation 2 emulation via software gets a bit of a raw deal. PS2 Classics emulator compatibility list as of the end of last year supports over 2,000 titles that are considered playable, with only around 130 considered unplayable or have major issues. Now compare this to the original Xbox emulator for the Xbox 360, and overall PS2 games have much more support, at least based on this list. 
Now, I do want to reiterate at this point, if you do not have a jailbreakable PlayStation 3, then you'll need to use the homebrew enabler method, which I'm not going to discuss in this video. However, I will probably look at picking up a PS3 Super Slim in future and check out the PS3 Hen in more detail. Now, in order to run the jailbreak on our PlayStation 3 with the web browser application, we want to go to www.ps3toolset.com. And when it prompts you to run the plugin, select yes. Now the first step of the process is to take a backup of your flash which is installed on your PlayStation 3. So after the page has loaded and assuming that you have a green tick next to the CFW compatible firmware which once again confirms we can jailbreak this model of PlayStation 3, click on the flash memory and then save flash memory backup and then select the USB device that you've inserted previously and this will dump the PS2 flash memory to the USB stick. From here, we can then take that USB stick back to our PC and verify that the dump is good by putting it through a program known as Pi PS3 Checker. The number of dangers and number of warnings is what you want to look at here. For mine, as you can see, I have zero errors and zero warnings, so this looks to be a good flash dump. Once this part is done, then we want to patch our flash so it can be jailbroken with a custom firmware. Now, before we go ahead and reinsert the USB stick back into our PlayStation 3, extract and copy the Evil NAT 4.90 custom firmware and extract it to the root of the USB stick. And while you're moving files across, I also recommend downloading Multiman, which is a custom firmware tool, a backup manager, and a file manager with many, many extra features. This will serve all our needs, especially when it comes to playing PS3, PS2, and PS1 backups. So now that we have a good flash dump, we can put the USB stick back into the PS3 and now select the flash memory patch option. This will load up the patch data that will be applied to our flash memory in order for the PlayStation 3 to accept and install a custom firmware. Next, you want to select load patch via HTTP and then select apply loaded patch. This will then write the patched flash back to the PlayStation 3 and this can take a few minutes and may appear as though the progress has frozen. So just put the controller down and let it finish. It's very important that you do not cut the power to your PlayStation 3 at this time. It could potentially brick your hardware. Now, once this is done, you can reboot the PS3 and install the 4.90 Evil NAT custom firmware from your USB stick. And then rebooting again will display the updated custom firmware. And at this point, you know that you are 100% in a jailbroken environment. Now the next thing that you want to install is a backup manager and for this I would recommend Multiman as mentioned previously but I would also recommend Iris Man or Managuns if you want different applications for backing up and launching your games. All three of these will essentially do the same task but I will stick with Multiman for this video. Optionally, you may also want to install Webman mod that installs services for your jailbroken PS3, such as a web server, FTP server, and lots more underneath Multiman itself. So now that we have Multiman set up, we can now back up our PS3 library. Now to show you how to back up your games, it's very, very simple. All you need obviously is an original PlayStation 3 game, and then you just pop your disc into the PlayStation 3 drive, and we're going to back up Ratchet and Clank. Now once we've inserted our disc, you can see if we scroll up the top here, you can see the Ratchet and Clank Future Tools of Destruction. Now you can see that it's pointing to a disc here. It says that it's actually on the disc. Now we can just play the game as we normally would, but if we press the triangle button, what we can do is we can copy it and we can basically tell it where do we want to dump this game. Do we want to dump it on the internal hard drive or the external USB? And of course, you just need to select the option that you have the storage for, and then you go ahead and just click on copy game. Now, because these games are pretty big, this game here is 22.25 gigabytes, which is pretty big. It's going to take a little bit of time to rip the entire contents of this disc to your hard drive or to your USB. But once you've done that, you'll have a complete copy on your PlayStation 3, and you will never need to access the original again. And I might add, once you launch into the game, if you are connected online, you can still pull down title updates as well, so you don't have to be stuck on a particular version. 
Now we said earlier that only backward compatible PS3s can play PS2 games and while this is true, we can leverage the software emulation used in the PS2 Classic selection that was available on the PlayStation Network. We can also use Multiman to rip PS2 games from disk directly as ISO images. And of course you can also download and copy ISO images directly that you've downloaded from the internet onto a USB stick or internally onto your PlayStation 3 hard drive as .iso files. And once again, once you've created your backup, you can simply launch them via Multiman. And of course you can do the exact same thing with PS1 titles, simply insert your PS1 disk. You can then use Multiman to rip the contents of your PS1 ISO and then you can launch and play the game as normal. So effectively we have a jailbroken PlayStation 3 that not only can run native PlayStation 3 games, it can emulate PS2 games at a pretty decent level of quality I might add. It's definitely not perfect and it's definitely not as good as owning an original PlayStation 3 fat model but you don't risk the chance of yellow light of death in this scenario and having a somewhat decent emulation layer is pretty good for me and of course you can have access to your entire PlayStation 1 catalog of games and this for me is really awesome. Now of course you can also expand the amount of storage in your PlayStation 3 either internally and externally. Now I believe the current limits internally is a 1.5 terabyte drive that you can have internally installed and I believe up to a two terabyte external drive. Now someone in the comments may correct me on that and if that information is not out of date or it's inaccurate, please let me know. But the takeaway here is that you can have a ton of storage. You can back up your entire contents of your PS2, PS1 and PS3 catalog onto your storage devices here and you'll never need the original discs ever again, which is awesome. And you have a PlayStation 3 that you can feel pretty confident that will be around for a long time and won't easily break down. So for me, having a jailbroken PlayStation 3 Slim is an absolute no-brainer in 2024. This is something that you definitely want to get on and check out for yourself. I personally am going to load up this PS3 full of a bunch more games and then I'm going to move it into my entertainment center. I'm fortunate enough to still have a original PS3 DualShock controller that has a good battery charge. So I'm very happy to kind of move this into the entertainment center as part of the games that I play on a day-to-day -day basis. This is something I've been wanting to do for a long time and I'm really happy that you can jailbreak a PS3 with the latest firmware in 2024. But we're going to leave it here for today's episode, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it was educational. If you are someone that is interested in jailbreaking your PlayStation 3, I will leave links to everything that I talked about in the description below. So check it out for yourself and have a good one. We will catch you guys in the next episode. Take care and bye for now.